Necromunda, one of my favorite games growing up and it finally makes its way to the channel. My ultimate goal will be to build and paint up a couple of different Necromunda gangs, including these heavy lifting goliaths. But first, I'd like to bring their setting to life with a few key pieces of the hive and helping me to do exactly that is this guy. Now recently I was lucky enough to get to play around with a Hello Mage 3D resin printer but that wouldn't be suitable to load up a table's worth of affordable terrain. And that's where this guy comes in, the Ender 3. And today we're going to take it for a spin and see if we can create some exciting terrain for war games and skirmish games like Necromunda. Now I'm still an absolute rookie when it comes to 3D printing. So for me, what's important is that a 3D printer arrives and only requires basic assembly and can automatically calibrate. I don't have the technical prowess to be able to do any of this fiddly business. Again, I follow the step-by-step -step video guide and in a short amount of time, I'm ready to print. I hunt around online and I find some terrain that I think will be perfect to decorate parts of our hive. Saucer Men Studios is an online site that sell 3D files and they have no idea that I'm plugging them. So it's a surprise for you and a surprise for them. I'll add a link below in the video description that will take you across to their site. I open the files individually in the Creality software and I can move the piece around and tinker with settings but as I mentioned earlier, I'm new here. So I'm going to simply export the files onto my USB. Into the printer, and turns out I just need to press print and I can stand back and enjoy the ride. The printer comes to life and works its magic, and it's so quick. Over the course of an afternoon, I print piece after piece and there's no post-printing cleanup needed. Instead, I can remove the magnet plate, pop the terrain piece off, and we're ready to go again. I wasn't expecting 3D printers to be this fast. I picture them as slow and methodical, but this thing is constantly fueled with caffeine. Look at it go! I need to stop or I'm going to sit here all day printing more and more terrain. I think we need to agree that this printer was a lot of fun, but now it's time to put some paint on these terrain pieces. So come join me in the underhive of this city as we bring the Necromunda terrain to life. I've started with spray cans to give me a head start. The pieces have all been primed in black, then sprayed with a coat of lead belcher. Guess what? None of these steps are difficult and I'm going to talk you through each of them. I'm also going to tell you a little bit about hive life, living on Necromunda, and this only takes me around two hours all up to do, which I think is really quick and they're going to look cool. Grabbing one or two extra metallics, and I'm picking out some pipes, panels, and random areas to help add some variety to what we're seeing. There's plenty of detail on the prints if you want to take your time and layer in different colors or even dry brush, but I'm happy with base coats, and then I'm relying heavily on my next step, which is this, a wash over the top of everything. Life in the hive is dirty. There's no time to stop and clean anything. And what would be the point? It's only going to be dirty again tomorrow. Planets like Necromunda are hive worlds. And they are characterized by these immense towering cities called hive cities. These enormous spires are home for hundreds of billions of citizens. The further down the spire you are, the lower your class and the tougher life is. In the bowels of this hive is where we find our Goliath gang that I'll be painting. The conditions down here are brutal and harsh. Goliath society values strength above all else. Power and respect are earned through physical prowess and combat ability. Leadership is often determined by who can physically dominate their peers. For info, I'm painting the House Goliath gang for a mate and he's also doing his best to talk Gordon and I into painting our own gangs and then joining him and his mates in a campaign. What do you reckon? Let me know below if that's a series or a journey that you'd be interested in watching as I paint up a couple of different gangs for Necromunda. 
the lower levels of a hive city are rife with pollution, toxic waste and industrial debris. The air is thick with smog and the environment is often hazardous due to the presence of dangerous machinery and unstable structures. The air quality is abysmal, filled with fumes and particulate matter from countless industrial processes. Water is often contaminated and waste disposal systems are inadequate, leading to a squalid living environment. Known for their immense size and physical strength, members of House Goliath are genetically engineered to thrive in the harsh industrial environment. They are typically involved in heavy labour, such as working in foundries, forges and chemical plants. So with the two vats, I'm aiming to capture this narrative. One vat contains the protein organic substances used to genetically engineer the gang members, and I'm using the UV dry and resin combined with a pinch of light flesh colour to create this disgusting layer of fat forming on the lower level. Then for the second vat, this can be hazardous toxic waste that the Goliath gang are using to act as their stimulants for combat. The kind of glowing green chemical sludge that as you simply approach, you start to feel short of breath and a burning sensation in your throat. Any gang members quarrelling down in these depths had best be ready to roll some hazard checks around vats like these. I'm happy to create lots of bubbles during this stage as it will add more character and legitimacy to the active vats. Down here, life expectancy is low and only the strongest will survive. So join me as we check out these completed terrain pieces that will decorate the depths of this hive city that House Goliath inhabit. That was so much fun. A couple of hours worth of printing and then a couple of hours worth of painting. I think it's totally worth it, an afternoon's work to add some character to your skirmish games. The Ender 3 from Creality was amazing and I'm already starting to make lists of all the different terrain that I want to print. And I think for an affordable option to cover a table for something like Warhammer or Necromunda, I don't think you can beat it. I'll add some links below if you'd like to check out the printers from Creality and make sure you watch some tech reviews online as well. For me though and the channel, you're going to be seeing a bit more of it as I've got some different projects that I'd like to work on whilst using the Ender 3. From the fantastic team at Creality to the amazing team that are the patrons of Flashing Badger Painting, I'd like to thank each of you so much for your ongoing support. Your support means that I can continue having fun making videos like these. And to give you an idea of how amazing they are, if they were standing atop a rickety catwalk overlooking a big vat full of proteiny grim sludge, I'd happily push kick them each into the center of it. So that they could benefit from the enhancements that they will get from the protein sludge. I'm not a bad guy. But remember, before you go, I'd love to hear from you below if you'd be keen on watching me paint up a couple of different Necromonda gangs. And better yet, if you know a little about the game, I'd love for you to tell me which gang I should play and why. But remember, I'm a rule of cool kind of guy. Thank you all so much, and I'll see you on the next one. Now get out of here. Oh, get up. Don't worry, I'm up. Got it.